Hey everybody, RB Plays here. Welcome back to another Linux tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a follow-up to our previous tutorial where we showed you how to install MultiMC uh, and then uh, and then some of the settings that go along with your first MultiMC installation. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is modifications. The other question that I get all the time aside from, hey RB, what do you use to, to play Minecraft with is how do you install mods on MultiMC because I downloaded MultiMC and I don't understand it. So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of different things that you can do with MultiMC to get your first modded installation uh, off the ground. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do mods. There's, uh, you can either build your own mod pack or you just you install Forge or Fabric and then you just drop mods in depending on what you want to play like, uh, like Thomcraft or you need to have JEI so that you can have expanded recipes and look things up or you want to do stuff with Ender.io and have this big technical base and, or anything like that. Uh, but you're not looking at a full kitchen sink or questing based mod pack. You just want to have a few mods so that you can have a different Minecraft experience um, than, than your normal vanilla experience. To do that, what you would do is you would go to whatever version of uh, vanilla installation that you have. Now, here's the one that we created last, uh, last time we were together. Uh, so you hit demo and then you go to edit instance. And under edit instance, you're gonna get a lot of different options. What you wanna look at is the version. Now you can see right here that we have a version of Minecraft 1.15.2. Like I said, there's two different ways that you can do this. You can either install Forge or you can install Fabric. Beautiful thing about MultiMC is you don't have to download anything at all to install Forge. If I wanted to install Forge, all I do is click that, It'll pull up the Forge database and it will give me all of the different versions of Forge going as far back as you would like to go. Uh, the highlighted or starred one is the typical current uh, released build. So 31.2.0 is the current released build as of today. There are newer builds that are out, but they're not necessarily compatible with all mods yet. Uh, so this one here, the one that's starred is generally the one that you would want to select if you want to uh, to install just a, a, a mod or two or half a dozen or however many you want to install and build your own pack. Uh, you do want to check with the mod developers to make sure that you get the right version of Forge if you're going to be doing this. But let's say we wanted to do this, we would just say, uh, okay, I want to add that particular version of Forge, Forge and go, okay. Look, Forge is installed. How about that? If I decide I don't want Forge in there anymore, then all I have to do is, uh, is, is remove it. So remove Forge. If we want to install Fabric, you just go there and it'll bring up the current Fabric list. So the current build for Fabric is 0.8.5 build 199. If I wanted to install Fabric, I would say OK. Now, the other thing that you want to make sure of is if you're installing Fabric, that you have to do the Fabric API as well. To get the Fabric API, you have to go to the Fabric website. And under the Fabric website, you just find Fabric API. You go to fabricmc.net. Fabric API, and it will take you to the Fabric API page on CurseForge. You download that. Once you get it downloaded, then you open your mod folder, your instance folder. Uh, so if you go to Loader Mods, you want to Add, and then you do Fabric API and hit OK. That mod is now installed in there, and you could run this version of Minecraft with Fabric and the Fabric API. Now, once you have Fabric installed, you probably are gonna have some trouble taking it back out. So I would not recommend going back and forth between Fabric and Forge in the same instance. If you wanna have a Fabric install, then do a Fabric install. If you wanna have a Forge install, then do a Forge install. The main consideration there is Forge mods and Fabric mods are not necessarily with, compatible with each other. When you're looking them up on CurseForge or whatever your uh, whatever website you're using to download your mods from, find out which mod launcher that they are uh, that they are available in. Now, let's say I want to let's say I'm not one of these people that want to build my own mine uh, my own Minecraft mod pack, right? That's me. I don't necessarily want to build my own. Uh, I do have a custom installation, and that is my Fabric 1.15 installation. And the only thing that I have in here, I might as well just show this to you right now. If I go to Edit Instance and I go to uh, Loader Mods, you see I have the Fabric API, and then I have the Replay Mod. The Replay Mod is what I use for all of my time lapses and such uh, in uh, in Minecraft, right? So 
That's how you install Forge. That's how you install Fabric. Uh, once you're ready to install mods, then you just go to your lo loader mod page. You click Add, and you add the and you add the mod to that that you want to that you'd want to create or that you'd want to have included in your mod uh, list, right? So the other thing that you could do is you could have a uh, a mod pack, right? So you want to play the latest version of Halcia uh, or the latest version of FTB Revelation or the uh, uh, the the latest installation of of some kind of Skyblock or Sky Factory. So all of those things are options. To add those, those are super easy. You go to your Curse Forge page. So I have a Curse Forge page right here. Oops, click there. So I have a Curse Forge page here, and you just find which uh, whichever mod pack you want. Could be RL Craft, could be Sky Factory, could be Big Valhelsia. So Valhelsia two. Uh, when you pull up here, it's going to show you all the things about it. But you go to Files. And then once you're on the files page, then you find either the main file or the server file, whichever one you want to download. In this case, we're looking at the, at, the, at the regular file, the main file. And then you just click download. Once you click download, I'm not going to click it now because I already have it. It should place a copy of that in your, uh, in your download folder. Okay. So in my download folder, I do have Valhalla 2. So we we'll go ahead and close that. We can go ahead and close that. All we have to do now is come back to MultiMC, add instance, import from zip. Then we go to our browse, we find our downloads page, and we see that right here under downloads we have Valhelsia 2, 2.2.1, uh, it's a zip file, we say open, and then we say OK. And it will download all of the mods that go with that. And then from there, you would make sure that you have enough RAM allocated and you would say launch the instance. All right. You also may have seen that there is another that you can do FTB legacy packs or FTB packs, right? So you don't necessarily have to go to CurseForge to get your downloads if you want to do an FTB pack. They have the public, they have the third parties, and they have the privates. And if you just scroll down through that list, you'll see that Pretty much every FTB pack you could ever want is included in that list. Now, when it comes to mod packs, there is a problem with downloading mod packs from CurseForge. If you do an import from a zip, it's very, very difficult to update that pack. Um, if you want to get, if the pack has an update released for it, then you have to go back to CurseForge. You have to download that uh, that updated instance, and then. What I do is I just create a new instance for the update to that pack. And then I move my world file from the old instance over to the new one. With the FTB legacy stuff, that's a little bit easier because now what you can do is you can go in and you can change the selected version. So like if I were to do FTB interactions, it shows that there's a version that version 1.9.1 is the most, cre uh, the most recent. If there was a 1.9.2, I could update to that later on. But with, with the other packs, the custom installed packs and stuff, everything becomes very manual and you do have to go through and make those changes uh, independently with what I would do is, is a new version or a new instance install uh, versus trying to update the mods one by one, because, which can become very, very tedious. But folks, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe. The likes and subscriptions help out oh so immensely. Uh, also, thank you so much for the support for these series. If there's any other tutorial that you'd like me to see for Linux and Minecraft and gaming in general, then uh, let me know down in the comments. But once again, folks, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.